My name is Davor and I'm a Master of Education student at UBC. Today we're going to be doing the Jacob's Ladder demonstration. Uh, when you do this demonstration, uh, you have to be very careful. Uh, make sure that uh, nobody touches the device when it's turned on. Uh, there's very high voltage running through it and uh, they can get a severe shock. Uh, also make sure not to leave the device turned on for too long as it'll start heating up and can uh, set on fire. Um, I'd say half a minute is the max time. Um, all right. Um, have you ever seen um, science movies or cartoons um, where uh, they have these uh, sparking uh, machines uh, in the lab? Uh, if you have, then you might have seen a machine like this. Um, it's called a Jacob's Ladder and it's been used in Hollywood uh, for many years. Uh, to make science labs look really cool. Uh, so let's see how it works. Alright, I'm turning it on. Now, when I turned it on, you may have heard uh, a loud humming noise, and that was the fan working. Uh, like I said before, um, the transformer gets really hot when we turn it on, so do not turn it on for longer than 30 seconds, otherwise it might set on fire. So, we see that we have here two uh, metal rods going from the bottom of the Jacob's Ladder all the way to the top. Uh, these are called electrodes. You can see they start off close together and they move further apart as they get higher up. So, what happens when uh, we turn the Jacob's Ladder on? Well. Um, each of these electrodes are connected to the opposite end of the transformer. Now, if you know anything about electricity, you know that it needs a closed loop for the electrons to travel. And here we've made a small gap in this loop. So the electrons want to jump from one rod to the other, but they can't because there's a gap between these rods. Um, so what happens? Well. Remember that the transformer increases the voltage greatly from 120 volts to 17,000 volts. And when we have such a high voltage, the air between the two rods, which is an insulator, and it's stopping the electrons from going, the air is ionized by the large potential difference. And this means that the air is broken up into uh, positive ions and negative electrons. And because of this, um, the electricity can now flow through. We actually call this now a plasma. And if you've seen our previous demonstration with the plasma globe, we know that plasma is a very good conductor of electricity. Because it has these free electrons around it, electrons can move. So when the air is ionized and this plasma is formed, the uh, electricity will run from one rod to the other and we will see uh, um, a light or uh, electricity going from one to the other. Now it starts at the bottom because electrons always try to find the path of least resistance and because the rods are closest at the, at the bottom that is the shortest path that the electrons can go. But why does it go up? Well, as the electrons are going through the air, through the plasma, the air starts heating up and we know that hot air rises. So, as this air, this plasma, starts heating up, it starts rising. And because the electrons can only travel through the plasma, not through the air, they'll keep the, the arc of electricity will keep going through that plasma, and it'll also rise with the plasma. And it'll rise higher and higher until it gets to the top, and the distance becomes too great, and the connection is lost. And as soon as that connection is lost, we again have a buildup of potential difference between these two and the air again will be ionized, and then we'll have the plasma getting hotter and rising up. So do you think that if I turn this upside down, and I turned it on, would the arc go the other way? If it was upside down, would it go from the top to the bottom, or in that case, from the bottom to the top? Well, no, because again, it all has to do with hot air rising. So it'll always be going in, in the up, upwards direction. So if we turned it upside down, it would only stay in this section and it wouldn't move.